Nothing on Kansas City. Here we go for the win. No NFL team wants to be labeled as a choker, but it's inevitable when you continue to unravel time and time again whenever the stakes are at an all-time high. Over the last few years, there have been no shortage of notable NFL stars or powerhouse teams that have continuously underperformed in big game moments. With all that said, let's dive into the 10 biggest chokers in the NFL right now. Buffalo Bills The Bills lost three Super Bowls in a row over the 1990 to 93 seasons. Call those guys chokers all you want, but at least they went to the big game four years in a row. The current era of the Buffalo Bills, however, can't even get anywhere close to the Super Bowl despite a top 5 QB in Josh Allen, a top 5 wide receiver in Stephon Diggs, and a top 10 head coach in Sean McDermott. When the Bills lost to Patrick Mahomes' Kansas City Chiefs in the 2020 AFC Championship game, it was still viewed as a major step forward for this franchise. Diggs even still stayed on the field to watch the Chiefs celebrate so he could use it as motivation. And ever since that moment, the Bills have won an impressive 36 regular season games. And they still haven't gotten back to the AFC Championship game. And call it Mahomes magic all you want, but the 2021 Divisional Round tilt in Kansas City, aka the 13 second game, was an all-time choke job by the Bills. They entered the ensuing 2022 season as the favorites to win Super Bowl 57, only to get crushed at home by the Cincinnati Bengals in the divisional round. Finally, Buffalo got home advantage against Mahomes and the Chiefs for their 2023 divisional round tilt. This was Buffalo's moment to finally break through their kryptonite. Yep, it culminated with Tyler Bass performing Wide Right Part 2. How Buffalo can field a top six scoring offense and defense three years in a row and not even get past the divisional round is just mind boggling. With all that star power and an elite head coach, they still can't get it done when it matters most. Dak Prescott. Prescott isn't much different than the man that he replaced, Tony Romo. You know, excellent individual stats, multiple Pro Bowl nods, always keeping his team in playoff contention, yet almost no playoff success to show for it. The Cowboys' humiliating 48-32 loss to the Green Bay Packers in the 2023 NFC wildcard round dropped Dak to 2-5 in the postseason for his career. Three of those losses have come at home, and all three home defeats were with Dallas as a betting favorite. His two playoff wins came against a mediocre 10-win Seattle Seahawks team in 2018 and against Tom Brady's 8-win Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2022. So hardly inspiring. With only 14 touchdowns and 7 INTs and 7 career playoff games, Prescott is essentially this era's Romo. He's blessed with plenty of star power in Dallas, yet number 4 just doesn't rise to the occasion when his team needs it most. Los Angeles Chargers we could use the two-word term classic Chargers and just call it a day, but we would be remiss if we didn't provide the jury with indisputable evidence about the Chargers being chokers. For starters, we can't forget when they blew a 27-0 lead to the Jacksonville Jaguars in the AFC wildcard round. The most amazing part is the Bolts won the turnover battle in that game 5-0 and still managed to lose. Like, come on, how is that possible? Oh, and how about them 2021 Bolts, the team that stood at 8-5 with four games to go, only to lose three of their final four to finish 9-8 and eight and miss the postseason. Remember when they needed a tie against the Raiders in Week 18 to qualify, and Brandon Staley used a timeout that basically convinced Vegas to go for the win? Which, uh, guess what? They capitalized on, yeah, yeah, good times. Oh my gosh, just look at the all-world talents of Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, and Derwin James. One total playoff appearance, no postseason Ws, and a whole lot of, of classic Chargers losses. They've actually been chokers every year since 2006. Even with new coaches and players, they still find incredible ways to blow games when it matters most. Ah, those Chargers, we tell you. Green Bay Packers defense. This may feel a bit random and like an awfully specific entry to some, but we're just being honest here, people. If the Packers defense didn't choke all the time, they would have won more than a single Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers. Consider that the Packers D allowed 285 rushing yards and four touchdowns in the 2019 NFC Championship blowout loss to the San Francisco 49ers. A year later, they failed to stop a nosebleed in the 2020 NFC title game against Tom Brady's Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Remember the Scotty Miller Hail Mary at the end of the half? And Kevin King's careless pass interference penalty on Ty Johnson that sealed the game for Tampa? Or how about letting Jimmy freaking Garoppolo march down the field to set up Robbie Gold's game-winning field goal in the 2021 NFC Divisional Round to end Aaron Rodgers' latest MVP campaign in sour fashion? Or hey, how about the defense no-showing for their must-win Week 18 2022 game against the Detroit Lions that cost Green Bay a playoff spot in A-Rod's final game with the organization? Oh. <laughs> 
And also, remember when the seven-seeded Packers held the top-seeded 49ers to seven points in the first half of their 2023 divisional round game? Only to implode by allowing 17 over for the final quarter and a half and a gut-wrenching 24-21 loss? Hey, welcome to the Packers, Jordan Love. Rodgers can tell you all about what it's like to carry the team on your back into the postseason, only for the defense to let you down when it matters most. Derek Carr Among the NFL's top 12 active passing yards leaders, only two have won a single postseason game. Andy Dalton, who hasn't been a full-time starter since 2019, and none other than Derek Carr. Carr is essentially a poor man's Dak Prescott, steady regular season QB stats who gives his team a chance to win most games. But when the pressure starts to mount, Carr crumbles like a cookie. Carr has only appeared in one playoff game, and that was a forgettable performance in the 2021 AFC wildcard round against the Cincinnati Bengals. Playing a D that allowed 22.1 points per game, Carr mustered just a single TD pass and threw a game ceiling pick to Jermaine Pratt near the goal line on the final drive. In 2023, Carr left the Las Vegas Raiders and signed with the New Orleans Saints. Despite a cakewalk of a schedule, and despite playing in football's worst division, Carr again failed to deliver for his star-studded team. Carr made headlines by constantly screaming at his teammates and refusing to take the blame when he was the one missing open receivers and throwing costly interceptions. New Orleans finished 9-8 and and missed out on the postseason for the third straight year. Six of their eight losses came by a single score, further evidence that Carr just couldn't deliver in the big moments when his team needed it most. Simply put, time is now running out for Carr to show he is not a choker. Ten NFL seasons, zero playoff wins. The numbers don't lie. Miami Dolphins The Dolphins have recorded four straight winning seasons since drafting Tua Tekabailoa fifth overall in 2020. Yes, he has done a wonderful job turning Miami back into a contender. But seriously, how do they have zero playoff wins to show for it? Oh yeah, that's, that's right, the whole uh, choker thing. Facing the Buffalo Bills in a winner go home game in week 17 of 2020, the Dolphins imploded in an ugly 56 to 26 defeat. That loss dropped Miami to 10 and 6 as they missed out on the playoffs for a fourth straight year. After an ugly 1-7 start in 2021, the Dolphins rallied with seven straight Ws. Then they collapsed again with a miserable 34 to 3 loss to the Tennessee Titans in week 17 that officially eliminated the Dolphins from the postseason. In 2022, Miami started out 8 and 3 under new head coach Mike McDaniel's, only to lose. Five in a row. They only snuck into the postseason thanks to a 11 to 6 win over the hapless New York Jets in week 18, before bowing out to Buffalo in the wildcard round. In 2023, the Dolphins started out 9 and 3 and looked poised to win their first division crown in 15 years. Then they lost three of their final five, including the last two contests, to hand the division to the Buffalo Bills. That meant facing Patrick Mahomes' Kansas City Chiefs in the wildcard round. The Dolphins, who averaged 29.2 points per game in the regular season, only scored seven in a 26 to 7 loss to the defending champs. So there you have it. The Dolphins are regular season darlings for about 75% uh, of the year or so. Then they'll just unravel late in the season, then go one and done in the playoffs. Yep, the more that stays the same. Kyler Murray. For all the hate that Cliff Kingsbury got with his annual second half collapse of the Arizona Cardinals, are people just forgetting that Kyler Murray wasn't exactly a saint either? I mean, come on, let the numbers on this graphic speak for themselves. It's the 2021 Cardinals that we especially can't forget about. A perfect 7-0 start that just went down the drain when Murray threw a red zone pick on Thursday night football against the Packers in week 8. After a 10-2 start, the Redbirds lost four of their final five regular season games before getting crushed 34-11 by the Los Angeles Rams in the wildcard round. In that game, Murray had 137 yards, no touchdowns, and two interceptions. His 2022 and 2023 seasons were essentially lost because of injuries, so I guess we can't fully fault Murray there. But it's not too early to ask yourself if he is lacking the it factor, because Arizona's annual tradition of playing their worst football in the second half of the season largely starts with Murray. At some point, the Cardinals have to ask themselves if they have the right guy. Kirk Cousins. Four Pro Bowls, nearly 40,000 career passing yards, and 270 total passing touchdowns, and only one playoff victory to show for it. Woof. 
Cousins' struggles in prime time and against teams with winning records has been well documented. He can pad his stats against bad teams, but he rarely answers the bell when the competition gets tougher. Cousins' Vikings lost a must-win game to the Chicago Bears at home in Week 17 of the 2018 season to miss out on the postseason. A stunning wildcard round loss to the New York Giants in 2022 dropped Cousins to 1-3 in the playoffs for his career. Another note, Cousins averaged 264.4 passing yards per game in the regular season for Minnesota from 2018 to 2023. In the playoffs, he averaged 229 yards per game. When you have elite stats and only one playoff win in almost a full decade as a starting QB, you're a choker. And Cousins is running out of time to shed that label as he now enters his age 36 season. Lamar Jackson Jackson is a pure winner in the regular season, with a 59-18-0 record throughout his first six NFL seasons. When it comes to the postseason, however, well, Jackson's play takes a very noticeable dip in production. The two-time MVP has a career regular season completion percentage of 64.5. He has 125 touchdown passes and an excellent 98.0 quarterback rating. Now take a dive into his six career playoff outings and yeah, it paints a much uglier picture. The 2023 AFC Championship game loss to the Chiefs at home dropped Jackson to 2-4 in the postseason for his career. Six touchdowns and six interceptions, a mediocre 57.4 completion percentage, and a woeful 75.7 QB rating. Jackson's sack percentage also goes from 7.4% in the regular season up to 11.8 in the playoffs. It's also uglier when we note that three of his four playoff losses have come at home. With the 2019 Divisional Round and 2023 AFC title game defeats all marking disappointing ends to his MVP seasons. And no, the Baltimore defense cannot take the blame here. In two of Jackson's four playoff defeats, the Ravens allowed exactly 17 points. There is no excuse for going from 28.4 points per game in the 2023 regular season to only 10 in the AFC title game loss to Kansas City. Right now, Jackson is in the tier of elite regular season QBs who just choke in the playoffs. It is entirely up to him to change that. Kyle Shanahan Shanahan was the offensive coordinator of the Atlanta Falcons team that blew a 25-point lead to the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 51. Shanahan's reckless play calling was the catalyst in that historic collapse. Shanahan coached the San Francisco 49ers to Super Bowl 54 and 58 appearances. His team held double-digit point leads over Patrick Mahomes' Chiefs in both those games. Somehow, the 49ers lost both of them. Not to mention that the 49ers also held a 10-point lead on the Rams in the 2021 NFC Championship game, only to allow 13 unanswered points in a 20-17 loss. So, Shani has been on the sidelines for three Super Bowl losses in which his team led by double digits, plus one NFC title game collapse. We know he's not on the field and can't take control of the player's execution, or lack thereof, but uh, he clearly chokes when the pressure mounts. The man can't figure out how to put games away. He gets in his own head and watches his team unravel at the worst possible times. That's on Shanahan more than his own players, especially when it's a running trend. But who do you think is the biggest choker in the NFL right now? Is there anyone that we may have missed or any team that we may have missed? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.